The first rule of anesthesia is that all tractable patients are examined by a doctor prior to the administration of any drugs. This is to ensure that they are acceptable surgical patients and also allows the doctor to make any necessary adjustments to the anesthetic protocol for that individual patient. To anesthetize our feline patients ready for prep and surgery, we use a combination of drugs for induction. In keeping with the principles of multimodal anesthesia, we also administer a single injection of a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. This is administered preoperatively and subcutaneously. All feline patients receive this NSAID, regardless of age. If there is concern as to the hydration status of a patient, subcutaneous fluid should be administered. Prior to the start of the day's surgeries, these drugs are prepared for each patient and placed in the individual patient's plastic bag. We dilute our induction agent with a small amount of sterile water, 0.05 to 0.1 milliliters. To induce a feline patient, the induction agent is administered intramuscularly. To administer the injection, the cat may be lightly scruffed with the left hand. The left forearm is used to gently brace the cat, and the cat's right hind leg may be held within the left hand. The injection is then administered with the technician's right hand in the large muscles of the caudal aspect of the right hind leg. The cat is then observed continuously until he or she succumbs to anesthesia. The process may take up to eight to 10 minutes. If no significant sedation is observed at eight minutes, or if anesthesia appears inadequate, the decision may be made to administer another quarter or half dose of the induction agent. Cats must be watched closely to aid in their safety. Pay particular attention to protection of a patent airway. As the feline patient succumbs to anesthesia, a potential danger is face planting or kinking the neck, which could obstruct the airway. Place the cat in lateral recumbency and stretch out the head and neck as the patient allows. Also, pay particular attention to any vomiting. Prevent asphyxiation by removing the vomit from the nose and mouth area if necessary. When the cat is unresponsive to stimuli, she will be brought out of the cage and placed on a clean blanket, still in lateral recumbency. The tongue is pulled out of the mouth in order to easily see the cat's color. The palpebral reflex is checked, and when absent, the cat will be transported to the prep area in the blanket. Grasp the cat from the back of the head and underneath the jaw, and keep the head and neck extended to protect the airway. Once in the prep area, the eyes are lubricated with corn oil, and the pulse oximeter is placed either on the tongue or the toe, dependent on staff preference. If the toe is to be used, it will be the fourth digit of either front paw. The toe will be shaved bilaterally and the probe is placed against the lateral edges. The palpebral reflex will be frequently monitored as our most accurate gauge of the patient's anesthetic depth. If the reflex returns prior to completion of the patient's surgery, either a quarter dose intravenously or a half dose intramuscularly of the induction agent is administered. The color of the patient will also be continually monitored. We often get pulse oximeter readings that stay consistently in the 80s or low 90s. We watch for downward trends in these readings or poor color. If we see either or both, we may opt to add a mask and supplemental oxygen at a flow rate of one liter per minute. Adjusting the pulse oximeter probe may be necessary as the probe may be slipping and causing inaccurate readings. If for any reason the patient needs to be awakened quickly, adapamazole may be administered. At the end of surgery, the pulse oximeter probe is removed and the cat is placed on the recovery mat in lateral recumbency. The head and neck are still extended and additional heat support is used. Cats are monitored closely in the recovery area and will remain there until they are able to hold their head up and are making attempts at a sternal position. At 60 minutes past induction, if they are not making progress toward recovery, they may be reversed. 
This involves using adipamazole as well as being certain they're warm and hydrated. If a reversal is used, we add 0.2 milliliters of saline to the same syringe to increase the volume and then vigorously rub the area after the injection to help distribute the drug. When the patient is ready to return to the kennel area, we again check any blankets to ensure they are clean and dry. Cats are replaced in their cages with their heads toward the door for easier monitoring. When awake, patients may be offered canned food and water in small amounts.